Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman and this is Christopher Drabs. This our time it was. Yes, we've been having issues with uh, our setup. Trying to get the recording to actually record. Yeah, for once, the green screen is not an issue. So, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, you can get all, well, you can get Predators and Wild jerseys for the time being. Yeah. You can get old Blackhawks jerseys. You can get old, uh, you can actually get old NHL jerseys, because I saw, like, old Red Wing jerseys, but is there really such a thing? The Red Wings really haven't changed much. You can get the, old Washington. The logo Cowboys. has, but the, the logo has, but the jersey has not. But the logo is very, it's not really too noticeable. Actually, they took the wheel out of it. That's all that's changed. Oh. What, they did? Yep. How come it still looks the same to me? They just put um, little, like, spirals in it to make it look like the wheel's still there. But all it is is it's just a circle with spokes. It's wow, not even a wheel. you really pay attention to logos, don't you? Well, we are talking about doing, like, a, our thoughts on NHL logos. All right, well, let's finish our stuff, commercial but, for Hockey Locker. <laughs> but our, we are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. You can give them a call at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Like he said, you can get a Wild and Predator and Admiral jerseys currently. But yeah, they'll get more. You'll get good customer service. You can get all your hockey gear. You can get referee gear as well. And uh, if you just like ice skating for fun or you're a figure skater, you can get your skate sharpened. Oh, <sighs> so. Yes. So tonight, the Milwaukee Admirals played the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Yeah, yeah, it was the Lumberjacks and the Admirals. Uh, Okay, so it is the Cleveland Monsters, quote, by AHL standards. But, but they were wearing uh, their IHL jerseys from 97, I believe. And the Admirals were wearing their green jerseys from the 70s. 70s. Yep. Yeah, it was a retro game. So it was actually kind of weird watching. I was kind of Yeah, confused, I'm not like, used to seeing the Admirals wear green. It's, it's either red, white, or blue. That's always been their colors as long as I've been alive. Clearly, I'm not old enough to remember the 70s. I was born in the 80s. Uh, well, you look it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one thing I want to do before we get into this game is um, we had promised that we would show off our championship shirts. Well, well am I seeing that right? Yellow on a t-shirt did not... Well, I went see-through partially with the green screen. And then... Yes, our name. It's on a racing t-shirt. Because, you know, we're legit like that. It's at the bottom. No Bob's Auto. You don't get no love. You don't pay us. And now we can't get any love. Cause, uh, anyways, yeah. That's our t-shirt. All these sponsors, if you are looking for someone else to sponsor. <laughs> yeah. You just got recognition for free. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, Daniel's going to go fight the Jedi's uh, once the show's over. Yeah, I do love that jersey, though. The Star Wars uh, jersey. I do love that jersey. Let me wear the Star Wars hat. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you're going to go fight some Jedis later. So, yeah. I'm having a nice day. Um, Admiral lost uh, a 3 2 in an overtime. So, big deal. We get a point out of it. Can't win them all. We still have a huge lead in our division. Um, Iowa did gain ground, but by only one point. Yeah, they uh, basically clobbered uh, Rockford tonight. Yeah. For those of you paying attention. All right, and uh, shots on goal in the first period. It was uh, 9-6 Cleveland. Uh, then uh, shots were 11-10 in the second for Milwaukee. And then in the third, Milwaukee was uh, nine shots to uh, Cleveland's five. Overtime, Milwaukee outshot them 4-1. For the game, we outshot Cleveland 30-25, to but we still lost in overtime. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, Milwaukee and Cleveland or were each each got a um, goal on the power play. Uh, Milwaukee was 1-6, for six, Cleveland 1-5. for five. Uh, bleh, Milwaukee had 9 penalties for 24 minutes, and uh, Cleveland had 9 penalties for 35 minutes. There was like three different fights. At one point, two fights happened at the exact same time. 
Um, it was a very physical game. Like, literally, they wanted to beat each other physically and not just play the game. Yeah, it just seemed like that. Also, it seemed like we ran into a hot goalie. It, it just seems like that. Yeah. Uh, their goalie did play very well tonight. Yeah, Ours I can't, did, I can't uh, Ingram, take anything away from him. Ingram played well, too. I'm not taking anything away from him, either. It's just it came down to who had the better chances and actually buried them. Yeah. And they got one chance in the power uh, uh, in the overtime, and that's all they needed. Yep. So, <coughs> let's get into the uh, and scoring. And didn't step on my toe uh, win it? Yeah, step on my toe won it. Okay. No, don't <laughs> step on my toe. <laughs> that joke's never going to get old. All right, so Anton Carlson scored the, set, his, the first goal of the game, his second of the year, with an assist from Stefan Mato. Um, and Trey Fix Woleski. Walensky. That was Matol's 10th in uh, Walensky's third. And then in the second on the power play was Matt Donovan with his third with an assist from Ellie Tolvin in his eighth and Anthony Richard his fourth. Then in the third it was Sam Vigneault uh, with an assist with his sixth with an assist from Adam Quandenning his sixth. 17th and Stefan Mateau his 11th I have to say his name a lot right yeah yeah and then uh, towards the end of the game Anthony Richard scored his uh, 11th of the year with an assist from Ron Pitlick what? and if you stomp on my toe I'm gonna stomp on your face you're wearing shoes Stefan Stefan Mateau won the game winner Went in overtime with his eighth of the year with Trey Fix Walensky and Adam Clendenning on the assist. Walensky's fourth, Clendenning's 18th. Uh, literally, Clendenning and without Clendenning and Mateau, they lose. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, three starts of the game were. Oh, well, I'll get to it. <laughs> let me get to the. Let, oh, me, get to let the, me call my dad's thought on here. Let me get to the three goals, three the, to the goalies first. Yeah. Cutter Ingram stopped 22 of 25, and Vinny Venavilainen Venavilainen stopped 28 of 30. Uh, attendance at the Rocket M Mortgage Fieldhouse was 12,000. Yeah, they did look like they had a pretty big turnout. 615. Yeah, that's probably more people there for that game than they do at a Cleveland Cavalier game nowadays. Um, yeah, because the Monsters and the Cleveland Cavaliers play in the same arena. And that's pretty sad when a minor league hockey team outdraws an NBA team. Well, we did it a couple times here in Milwaukee when we were Before at the Before we became relevant. <laughs> um, we did that to the Bucks. Uh, before Giannis came along. <laughs> was that before Giannis after Red, or was that before the Big Three in the early 2000s? That was during um, that Giannis was... in Red, the Christmas color jerseys. Oh, right so Giannis' rookie year? Yeah, right, Giannis' rookie year. Oh, back when nobody wanted to go to the Bradley Center. Gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. Because everybody pretty much got sick of how old and dilapidated that building was. In, it's, I still kind of miss it because I worked there for so many years. And there were so many memories of good things for the Admirals that happened in that building. Yep. Um, so far, not much good has come at their new place. But, and they're working on it. They're working on something special this year. Um, so three stars of the game are Vinny Venalainen with 28 saves on 30 shots. Um, and then Sam Vigneault with a goal. And Stefan Mateau with one goal and two assists. All right, now let me get into this because now with Carrier actually turning it around, I have to pick somebody new to pick on. Yeah, because what he did today was some research, and apparently the Admirals can't get Carrier unless he clears waivers. Correct. And he's good enough to where he'll have a lot of people to pounce on him. So Admiral fans, uh, no more Carrier in uh, Milwaukee. Unless yep. somehow he slips through waivers and ends up getting claimed by us again. Yep, uh, so my guy, for now, and I know a lot of people may look at me and go, well, he had an assist tonight, but it's Ellie Tolvanen. He's not consistent. He doesn't carry the stigma of a first-round pick, 
and he's slowly turning into a bust. And remember, he ripped Carrier, and now look at Carrier. He's stuck in the NHL. Ain't that the whole point of us being a minor league system to develop NHL guys? Correct. So, so he ripping Carrier actually benefited him. So he played hard to continuously get called up, and that got him stuck. Yep. And that was just after a conversation I had had with him and, and told him about what our show is. And he had goes, huh? Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. And I go, yeah, but you're doing the best you can for you. Yeah. Right? For your team. And once he started doing that. Yeah, look at all the assists he's been racking up. And yeah, he was a big contributor in that uh, winning streak with it. Yep, and last year's winning streak as well. So, yeah. so hey, congratulations, Carrier. You're officially in the NHL, and you can't come back down unless uh, you go through the waiver process. Unless the uh, Predators do not play him, which in that case he will be fine. Yeah, that's like the only loophole. But the Predators, they need all the help they can get. All right, so on my list tonight is Steven Cetini, uh Lucas Craig, Illy Tolvin, and Rem Pitt. Nope, not Rem Pitt. Look. Yeah, bite your tongue. Pitlick was actually good tonight. Uh, Tommy Novak, Tanner Janot, uh, Josh Healy, Laurent Dauphin, and Arvin Atwal. Arvin Atwal had a good fight. Yeah. That was part of that two fights in one that we got. Because there was literally two fights at the same time. And Atwal. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, so that's all I got for the game now. Looking forward. They play tomorrow at noon? Against the same team, the Cleveland uh, Monsters. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do a preview. You know, I already did one last show, and now this one. So that's all the previewing for Cleveland you need. All right, so upcoming for the Admirals, um, we do have a couple promotions coming up before we get into the NHL preview. Yeah, have at it. Do you think? Um, so the... up first we have on Wednesday, January 8th, we have Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Um, to all law enforcement personnel and their families, it is eight or nine dollars. Um, so for that, um, first off from us, thank you for all your services and everything you do to help our community. Um, but that's that's I'll come out and support law enforcement. Appreciation Day if you back the blue. Um, then on January 10th, we're going to be wearing our 70s jerseys. The ones that they wore in Cleveland tonight. And then we're going to be wearing, um, again, on the 11th. Apparently, they're wearing them tomorrow as well. Okay. That's fine by me, man. Um, so, uh, Saturday is... Uh, the 11th, they're giving away winter hats. They're going to be wearing these jerseys as well. And you can meet Admirals Led, uh, Welcome Back Night. You can meet Admirals uh, Legends or Admirals Greats. Uh, Rick Sirius, Daniel Kaur, Phil, Mr. Admiral Phil Whitliff, uh, Buzz Schneider from the Miracle Team, also known as the 1980 yeah, U.S. The Olympic... Ice. Not just the Miracle Team, the Miracle on Ice Team. Yep, um, the 1980 Olympic team, uh, Buzz Schneider. You could also meet original Admirals Barty Loomis and Tony Skazafave. This, uh, then uh, they're also wearing those jerseys tonight, or jerseys that night. Yep. And they're giving away, for the two, first 2,500 fans, we'll get an Admirals branded clear plastic tote, which is something I greatly need, and you will get a visit from Nash, uh, from up from there in Nashville. Yeah. So the 11th and 12th look like a busy weekend for us. Yeah, yeah. Um. Like the 11th. That's next week. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I have no problem with it either. I just had to let that sink in. Like, okay, the 11th next week. Or... Yeah, we were like, oh, it's already a week away. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then 2020 after, is starting off kind of weird. Yeah. Um, Something don't feel right. Eh. Um, when Wednesday, January 15th, it is an Admirals winning Wednesday, as well as the first 2,000 fans will get a cloth lens cleaner. You could use them to clean your glasses or your phone. Just some extra Admirals merch you can have. Then on Friday, January 24th, you have the post-game concert of Skillet. 
Um, they are, as they call, legendary Christian rock band. Um, they, for as far as Christian rock band go, rock bands go, there's probably about two legendary ones. Skillet is one, Creed is the other. Yeah. So. That's uh, funny, Creed Christian rock. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but with all the issues that group said, yeah, no, no. Um, we're not doing a music show. Mm. No. If we wanted to do that, we'd have time to do do that somewhere else. Yeah. This ain't it. All right. Uh, All right. So, in other news, we do have other news. Okay. Oh, wait. Go ahead with your preview. Gotcha. Wait, wait. If you want to talk about, like, the auto roster or whatnot and who can't come back, because you also discovered uh, Blackwell's in the same spot Kerry is. Yes, Blackwell, Blackwell is above the age restriction for waivers so that he has to actually go through waivers. Now, he could have got sent down before the season ends and not have to go through waivers, or before the season uh, started and not go through waivers, but he still goes through waivers. Now, all Preds fans, and me and him in particular, are happy to see this. I'm not happy that it happened, but I am happy that there was discipline for it. Corey Perry suspended for five games. Elbowing. He had an elbow to uh, Ryan Ellis' jaw during the Winter Classic. Now, with that being said, Ryan Ellis to IR. Um, he With the IR, okay, it, it may not be serious at all. It may just be, you know. Just give the guy some rest to get his bearings back. He did take a wicked elbow to the jaw. I mean, dude, that hurt me just looking at it. And I was only watching it on TV. He had it happen to him. So, yeah, he needs to get his head right. Concussions, they're no joke. You uh, can't be too uh, cautious with those. Or, was that the right way of saying that? Did I botch that? Yeah, well, no. People, they're used to me misspeaking. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, I do have something that, with that, he will miss the games this weekend. And as well as the... Uh, hang on. As I was gonna say, I thought you had it up on the computer. I did, but I do. I have uh, the calendar on my phone of what particular days he will miss. He'll miss the Preds game tomorrow and Sunday, as well as Tuesday's game. And then he will be eligible to play on the 9th versus the Blackhawks. That is his earliest eligibility. Man, I'm going to be here a lot this weekend, man. All right, so the uh, Predators play. We have a th- we have a 3-3 three and three this weekend. The Predators then play a 3-3 three and three next weekend. Yeah, but this weekend, obviously, we have the Admirals tonight. We have the Predators and Admirals tomorrow. And then we have the Predators Sunday. So, yeah. And the Predators game on Sunday doesn't start till uh, 9.30 at night. Oh, cool. So I get to leave here and then come back. I, I like that. <laughs> don't worry about don't worry about why I said it like that, people. We have other stuff going on too. Yep, we have personal lives. Alright, so the up next for the Predators is the LA Kings. <sighs> yeah. Alright. With the LA Kings, the last time they played the Predators was October twelfth. They uh beat the Predators seven to four. Um, let's see here. We got their all right, their front their forward line is looking like Alex Ayafolo, he has seven goals, fifteen assists. Um Anzi Kopitar, fifteen goals, twenty two assists, and then Tyler Tafoli, eleven goals, twelve assists. Uh their second forward line, you got Adrian Kemp. He has uh, eight goals, nine assists. We got Blake uh, Lizzo. L I Z O T T. Lizzo. Well, he had four goals, eleven assists, and then Austin Wagner, three goals and four assists. Um, for their defensive pairings, uh, their first line they got Sean Walker. Uh, four goals, twelve assists, and then Drew Doughty, six goals, twenty assists. Uh, after that, they got some garbage defense. Like, I really want to worry about their defensive pairings. As far as defensemen shooting from the point, the only guy you really got to worry about is Dowdy. Yeah, so, but 
if you want to worry about if you want to worry about their two forward lines, uh, the first two I mentioned would be good. I mean, other than that, uh, Jeff Carter, he's in the third line. He has 12 goals, 8 assists. But everybody else is pretty uh, tame. Honestly, I think the Kings, given the way the Predators are playing, the Kings might give them a run for their money tomorrow. Let's see how people do. Um... I mean, so as far as in net for the Kings, it ain't getting much better there either. Um, Quick is just like Pecorine on the way towards the end of a long, illustrious, legendary career. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to you and what happened to my usual host? Um, well, you never you never uttered Jonathan Quick and legendary career in the same sentence ever. I actually used to cheer for Did the Kings. Did you hit your head? No, I actually used to cheer for the Kings back when they were playing the Penguins and Rangers all the time. Uh, I cheered for them their last two Stanley Cup runs. That was about it. <laughs> I, other than that, I've never really been a Kings fan. I mean, but anyways, I think the Kings are gonna be yeah, tough I mean, given the way the Predators have been playing recently. Well, like I said, giving up their give, getting into their goaltending. Uh, Jonathan Quick's played in 28 games with 11 wins, 15 losses, with a .8. 9-4 save percentage and a 3.05 goals against average. Oh, crap. Uh, once you're done with the goals, we forgot one other AHL piece of news. We'll get to that because that ties into us talking about the All-Star Weekend. Yeah, like I said, once you finish up your goalie breakdown for the Kings, remember at the 9.30 p.m. Central time start tomorrow night. It's a late one, guys. Um, and then we have uh, Jake Campbell... Uh, he has 14 games played, 6 wins, 6 losses. Uh, that probably means that he came in in relief in 2 games uh, with a .9, uh, .894 save percentage and a 2.84 goals against average. Um, Wait. That's how they stack up. Oh, yeah, I was, no, no, I was confused. It showed me how the teams stack up. On yeah, yeah, players. I was confused because I was seeing Predator players and you're reading stats for the Kings. It took me a while to realize, oh, okay. Yep. I'm slow. I got other things on my mind. It happens. So, like when I was talking about the injured reserve list, which I had to abandon oh. that talk because of things. All right, so first off, a club must, uh, this is on the AHL's uh Roster, roster. Uh, basically, it's how do I explain it? Your hockey operations guidelines. Yeah, it's the NHL. Yes. All right. So first off, injured reserve. Injured reserve. A player who is injured that is rent injured that. Uh, oh wait. A player who has an injury that renders him physically unable to play for a minimum of seven days after the date of the injury, which was the Winter Classic. Yeah. Um, can be placed on the club's IR injured reserve list. Once the player is placed on, on the list, the cl club may replace said player on the NHL roster with any player. All, you know, determinations that staff accordingly. Blah. Basically, at GM and coach's discretion. To make it easy, I didn't want to have to go into. Coaches and clubs and owners and yeah, all. Yeah, he all didn't that. want to bore you guys with all the legalese. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying that you know, Ellis can be back by be back Thursday, by by Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. He'll be yeah. fine. I just hope it's not anything more serious than just a broken jaw. I hope his concussion symptoms uh, fade. Don't you? Because you don't want those concussion syndrome stuff to linger. Because that stuff can linger. Alright, uh, so, uh, you good? We about to start talking All-Star? Can I go? Actually, I do have one thing. Andre Fleury, Mark andre Fleury, was called to the All-Star game. Now, and... Past, you could just go, I don't want to be in it. Uh -huh. And no ramifications. Uh -huh. Now, you do it. It's an automatic one game suspension. So Flurry is now suspended for one game. Why? Because he passed on the invitation. 
It, if you were, if you had something going on, or you had an injury, or something like that, that would have made it completely different. But him just saying so far out that I'm not gonna be there, I'm not going. That makes you automatic one in game and suspension under the NHL public relations rule. Okay, and the NHL's Wonder Wider TV ratings are currently pretty low. Well, as far as from what I've heard from it. He has a choice. He can miss the Bruins game before it, or he can miss the game against Carolina after it. Either way, you're playing pretty p- tough teams before so and he's after. So miss the game against Jerks. I don't know. I'd rather um, play replacing Jerks. him is going to be Jacob Markstrom. Yeah. Okay, that's a good way to break into the. We're going to talk about the All Star game now. Yep. Yeah, don't the Predators only have one representative? Uh, yeah, Roman Yossi. All right, as far as the um, as far as the AHL All Star Game, uh, the Milwaukee Admirals have three representatives. They have Alexander Carrier, uh, Connor Ingram, and uh, they have uh, Yakov Trenin. But the Central, and they also have Coach Taylor. So technically, the Central team and the All-Stars, basically the Admirals. So that's going to be interesting to watch. I'm, yeah. a, I'm actually looking forward to the AHL All-Star game more than I am the NHL one, to be honest. With the All-Star games, all I watch is the skills competition, because that's a lot of fun to watch. Um, where with the game itself, I do like that they do the three on three five minute periods. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. For but making it I, easy I to watch. Have, I only want to watch the AHL one because the Admirals have a lot of representatives. The NHL, you know, all you've got is one. Well, Predators, for now, they because they do have a fan three. vote going, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, not to mention, this is what Carl Taylor's uh, second year as our coach, and he's the all star coach. For our division, that's pretty impressive. That just shows you we have a good coach here in Milwaukee. I'm very All happy. All right. With our so coach. for the Central, the Predators representative for the Central Division is Matt Duchesne. I thought you said Yossi. No. Well, uh, as far as the last man vote in, so uh, if you want to vote for someone in the last man vote, vote for Matt Duchesne. He can get into the All Star game. Um, uh, outside of that. He is uh, stacked up against some tough competition. Yeah, Jonathan Taves. Uh, Kale McCarr, Patrick Laine, and Ryan Suter. I have Jamie Benn as well. Yeah. So it's not going to be a walk in the park to have this happen. So come on, Predators fans, get out there and vote. (laughs) It is 2020 after all. Yeah. (laughs) We just got to get used to that feeling. So, yeah. Oh, when is the date for the All-Star game, seeing how we were talking about it? One second. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you would have uh, mentioned that. Okay, the All Star last man in vote closes January tenth at midnight, Eastern stand, Eastern time. You can vote tw- ten times a day, so go vote. And when's the game? For the the skills competition is January twenty fourth. No, it has to be the twenty fifth. Because of the skills competition for the AHL is January 26th, and the AHL All-Star Game is Monday, January 27th. Uh, yeah, they're giving them a day off in between called Media Day. Yeah, but how is how is the AHL game affected by the NHL? I don't know, no. The NHL's game is on the 20, uh, skills competition is on the 24th. I believe that they're going to have a celebrity game on the 25th. Don't quote so the me NHL on... All Star Game is January twenty sixth. The skills competition is going to be on a Friday. Okay, I, I'm just trying to figure it out. It's three days like the NBA All Star Weekend. Yeah. So. That works. Um. Yeah, but uh, get out there and vote for Matt Duchesne. Try to help him uh, join uh, Yossi. And yeah, the Admirals they have plenty of All Stars. They've had a great year this year. So. Yeah, definitely look forward to it. Oh, by the way, folks, it is not too late to join up for Roscoe's... Uh, Kids Club. Uh, Roscoe's, Roscoe's Crew. crew um, it's just 30 bucks. You can get three tickets to games. 
Uh, three tickets to an Admirals game, a backpack, some cool little gifts um, for the kid. Um, it's only 30 bucks, so the three tickets alone are more than the than it, the, the crew itself. And actually, if you show up on the games that are on the back of the little thing, they give you a gift. So, it's just something nice that they do for the kids. Now, to what you were talking about, about guys who could be... Permanently in Nashville. Permanently in Nashville. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't see Tenorti being permanently up there. Well, that, does he meet that criteria of doesn't possibly ma- having to go on waivers? Yes, but it doesn't matter. He's there. Nobody's going to claim him. They're, they'd have to hold him for 15 days on their roster. Mm. And that means that if you claim him and don't play him and then send him down, if he doesn't play in two games before you send him down, he gets deferred back to Nashville anyways and then assigned to Milwaukee. Okay. So that's how that works. All right. Anyways, keep on going down the list. Clear Actually, Carrier is still clear. He's under the limit, so he's good. I just noticed the game's played, and he's still on his entry level, so he's good. Uh, Dante Favreau is waivers exempt. Uh, Yakov Trenin is waivers exempt. Colin Blackwell is not. So, yeah, Blackwell currently is... Blackwell and Tenorti are the ones that are not. Uh, currently on an injured reserve is Colton Sissons and Ryan Ellis. Well, what's Sissons on there for? I don't know. Broken leg, I think it was. That's what it looked like. It's all what? They made it official. Is it broken leg or are they just saying it's lower body? They're saying it's lower body, but the man's in a dang boot. Pro- yeah, it might be a broken <laughs> leg or a broken ankle. Either way, they'll put you in a boot. Yeah. Um, it was. It looked like an ankle or an- broken. It was broken, that was for sure, because he tried to put pressure on it and just looked. It cried. Yeah. Well, that sucks. But hey, that's what happens with the Winter Classic. He wasn't even in the Winter Classic. Oh yeah, that's right. That was the game before. Right? Yep, versus Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right. So with all the injuries and calls up, send downs, and throughout everything, um, we decided it would be a good idea to figure out what's in Florida for us looking forward, because. We have to remember that we are a minor league system and that if Nashville needs somebody, they're going to take whoever's their best option. So that means that if somebody's hot at the moment, he's gone. So up top, we got Cam Johnson. Yeah. Johnson! For all you. No cracking perverted jokes. We got to keep it PC, buddy. Or PG, whatever. It was a PG joke. We have to keep it clean. All right, anyway. Austin Powers was not PG-13. Okay, anyways. Uh, he's 25 years old from Troy, Michigan. He's 6'1 and is a goaltender. Uh, signed by the Admirals under a um, uh, AHL deal. He has 11 games played with a 2.50 goals against average and a .914 save percentage. On the flip side, we have Ken Appleby. Now, down there, they do have one other goalie, and I believe Ken Appleby is not playing. I think he is hurt. Um, if there's any Florida Everblades fans that watch our show, can you kind of verify with us uh, what's going on with that? Because every time I see them play, he never plays. He's 24 years old, six foot four, 209, catches left hand. Um, he has played in 23 games with a 2.40 goals against average and a .909 save percentage. All right, so now we get into the forwards. So up first we got Zach Magwood, which us Admiral fans are no stranger to. He signed through with the Predators through 2021. He's 21 years old, 5 foot uh, 10. He's a center. He shoots right handed. He currently plays with the Florida Everblades. Uh, he has played 28 games with 10 goals, 16 assists for 26 points with 14 penalty minutes and a plus 16. Hmm. I'm waiting for this to load. It just takes a little bit. So up next we got Joe Pendenza. 
Um, he's 29 years old, 5'11", shoots left-handed from uh, Wilmington, Massachusetts. He is currently played nine games with the Admirals with one assist, uh, zero plus minus. He has played in eight games for the Florida Everblades with three goals, six assists, nine points, and a plus eight. All right, up next we got Hugo Waugh. He was signed to a contract with the Admirals through 2021. He is a center, 22 years old, shoots right-handed, 6 foot one. Uh, he has currently played in 29 games for the Florida Everblades, 8 goals, 4 assists, 12 points, plus 9. Um, these are some guys that we could potentially sign on PTO, which is a professional trial contract. This is Justin Auger. He was the captain uh, four years ago for the Ontario Reign uh, when they were the Manchester Monarchs. When they won the Calder Cup their last year. He has played in 29 games for the Everblades. He has 12 goals, 9 assists, 21 points. He has 16 penalty minutes and a plus 10. He is 25 years old, 6 foot 6, shoots right handed. And of course, the guy who made us all very happy during uh, the uh, Admirals uh, preseason game, Michael Huntebrinker. Which is, I get asked about what he's doing a lot. Uh, he's 27 years old, setter. Uh, he's 5 foot 11 and shoots left handed. He, he currently this year so far has uh, 21 games played, 10 assists, 10 goals, 20 points, plus 9. So those are your guys down there. So in, what's the chances of any of these guys coming on up? Um, right now, as it sits, <clears throat> I don't know. We don't know what the future holds for us because at this point, tomorrow, the worst could happen. Tomorrow, the best could happen. We don't know. So we're basically in a holding pattern currently, yeah. which is probably the worst place to be. Yeah. Set out what if, what, what's going to happen? What if this happens? What if that? Yeah, happens? that's the, the the we're basically stuck in the world of what ifs. Yeah. You know, because either we stay where we are, where everyone stays healthy, or people get injured and we have to make a decision. Because yeah, I I can live with uh, knowing that we have guys that are about to leave. I can live with that. I can't live with the whole not knowing. Not knowing is the worst part. Yes, but we can only go game by game, and that's when we know. That sounds pretty cliche, but you're right. It, it's right on the money, but that sounds cliche. Really no. Cliche. Oh, what? Can you reach over there? We do uh, one is in order. Um, in, in our system, normally we don't. We haven't been able to do this in many in our year that we've been doing this so far. But very much stick taps to one Phil Tomasino. Phil Tomasino is playing in the OHL. He has 34 games played, 20 goals, 32 assists for 52 points in 34 games with a plus one. That means his defense is complete garbage. But he puts the puck in the net. Who cares? Yeah. Stick taps to 50 points in under 50 games. In the juniors, when you're 18 years old and you're playing to basically further your career and show that Nashville didn't waste their first round pick on you. Afana Zanev has 39 points, who's the next closest guy with 33 games played, which means that he's over a point per game. He, I'm just saying, Nashville has drafted some really talented forwards right here, and they know how to put the puck well, away. Well, it's good to see we have a bright future. I mean, obviously, you got Zach Magwood, who's down there in, in Yeah, in but we're already, we're already aware of what he can do. We both said that he has potential to be really good. I'm actually looking forward to seeing him get a call back up to Milwaukee, at least. And we're also, um, <coughs> David Ferentz and Patrick Harper are both in their final year of college, so we know that they're going to make the jump next year. They're on year four. You can't go past that. Uh, so we're just saying we've got the Admirals – have a bright future going forward. We're really happy with the team we got currently. Um, but us, we've got things to do for the rest of the night. We're going to watch some wrestling. Yeah, Shout yeah, out to he, Josh. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> what? 
Wrestling. Oh man, yeah. yeah. you, you also got to go uh, fight some stormtroopers or uh, Jedi's, I should say, because you look like a stormtrooper. No, yeah. ain't that a stormtrooper jersey? Yes. Yeah. So you got to really fight comfy, some too. Jedi's. This is really comfy. But um, hockey jerseys are always comfy because this replica is a comfy jersey as well. Yep, so uh, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Walker. Uh, go check them out, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Tell them that we sent you. Tell them that from Milwaukee to Nashville sent you, and go get all your hockey needs. We Oh, tell your friends to we'll like our you. page, watch our videos. We will see you tomorrow. Twice We're, tomorrow. We will probably do our day show live. There will be no green screen, so I'm sorry. Because yeah. we're not going to fight with it. Yeah. Trust me, it took a half hour just to get our set ready. Yeah, and, for tonight's show. And me throwing a light setting. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we have two shows for you tomorrow. It is naturally frustrating. play at noon, so that video will be done about 3 or 4. And then the Preds, that game, that video needs to be done tomorrow by 1.30. Yep. Because we have plans. So, yeah, one thirty is the absolute latest that video should be done. Yep. Yeah, because I doubt the Predators are going to overtime. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm questioning uh, the direction the team's headed because of uh, all the uncertainty. I, the, with the uncertainty does breed hope because when guys feel that their jobs are uncertain...